Hello and welcome back to Easy Editing with Edius. In this lesson we're going to take a look at uh, the four main windows in Edius and how they can be arranged uh, in your editing environment, arranged on your screen, uh, to help facilitate the various editing tasks that you will be faced with uh, in a typical edit. We can see that the project that we started in our last tutorial shows up now in our recent projects. Just go ahead and either double click on that or with the project that you want to start highlighted, go ahead and click on the open button. Now, how long it takes Edius to load up a project it depends a lot on how much media you already have assigned to the project. If you don't have a lot of media assigned to a project, it should open very rapidly. But if you have hundreds or perhaps even thousands of clips assigned to a project, uh, Edius may indeed take a while to open. If you find that uh, it's just taking an inordinate amount of time to open, you might want to check and see if your antivirus software is operating. Some antivirus software will actually want to stop and take a look at each individual media file that's being loaded up into EDIUS, and this can really uh, slow down the process of loading up a program. So if you're running uh, antivirus software, just make sure that uh, its functions are disabled while you're running EDIUS, and you'll find that EDIUS runs a lot smoother. And if you're worried about catching a virus while your antivirus is turned off, uh, perhaps uh, it's a good idea to keep your editing computer separate from your email uh, and uh, internet browsing uh, computer. Uh, if you only have one computer in your house, good idea is to, while you are running EDIUS, don't uh, be connected to the internet, don't be looking, checking your email or different things while you're editing. And that way it's not a problem if you have your antivirus software turned off temporarily. And then when you're finished your edit, uh, you can always turn these back on so that while you do browse your internet or check your email that you'll be safe. Alright, now if you are running EDIUS on a computer system that has just one monitor, one computer screen like a laptop or a uh, desktop that, that has just the one monitor, EDIUS will open up uh, with a default arrangement of your windows that looks something like this. It won't quite be the same but something very similar where you have four main windows resident on uh, the one screen. If you have a two monitor system these two windows, the bin window and the palette window, uh, will be over on your second screen. But uh, since most people who try out the program maybe have just downloaded the 30-day trial uh, are likely trying it on a laptop or a home computer system where there may be only one monitor. Uh, we're going to go ahead and do all of our tutorials with a one screen system. Uh, partly because this allows us to show you what uh, you can do with very minimal equipment, but also it uh, accommodates the recording of these tutorials a lot better to have just the one screen. All right, so what we have, uh, again, are four basic uh, windows to start out with. There are many other windows uh, that we will be able to open up as we go through our tutorials, but uh, there are four basic windows, four main windows uh, in the EDIUS program. And uh, as you work inside any one of these windows, you'll notice that there's a green border that shows up around the window that you're currently working with. And this gives you a very good visual clue of where your focus is at any given moment and lets you know where your mouse and your keyboard actions are going to be effective. Well, let's introduce you uh, now to our four main windows. The top one in the left is called our preview window. And this is considered to be uh, perhaps one of the most important windows in the program, partly because it contains all of our drop-down menus, but also it is the window that you use to close the program. Uh, when you want to exit the program, uh, use the X at the very top of this window as opposed to using the X at the very right hand top corner. If you should use this, all you're going to do is close the bin window, not the program. And so when you really want to close the program, be sure and remember that the X at the top of the preview window is the one that you want to use to close the program. Now, uh, besides being the window where all the drop-down menus are, 
It is called the preview window for good reason, because this is where we preview all of our clips. Let's uh, bring in a couple clips to illustrate uh, what we mean by that. And you can do that uh, uh, several different ways. One is to go to your bin window and drag and drop a media clip over to the preview window. And uh, this gives us the opportunity to scan through the clip to be able to determine whether there's any usable media. And if you see something that's going to work uh, for your purposes, you can go ahead and set an endpoint where your video clip will start. And then using your mouse, you can slide across to the point uh, where you would like to end your clip and hit an out point. And that gives us a selection of any particular clip that we can now bring down to our timeline and use it as part of our edit. Now we see that uh, as we have done this, we have received a video portion of the clip, but we have not received any audio. And as we scrub through it and uh, or play it, we see that there's no audio playing. Well, what's going on here? What uh, has happened is uh, we have uh, not yet told Edius that we want audio and we can do that by going down here and highlighting one of the audio tracks and now this time as we bring our video clip down to our video track we see that we also have corresponding audio. Now notice once we have brought a clip down to our timeline window that we see the video being represented in our second preview monitor, the record monitor. Okay, so that is our preview window. And next in line over to our right is our bin window, or as some have come to call it, our bin resource window, because it is where all of our media resources are stored. As you import um, video and audio, music, uh, voiceovers, narration, uh, graphics, and still shots, they will all show up here, or representations of this media will show up here in our bin window. And this gives us an opportunity to be able to visually look at the various types of media that are available to us in our edit. And in another tutorial, we'll take a much closer look at the bin window and the various features of the bin window that uh, we can utilize to organize our media in a more optimal way so that we can set up our project for very efficient edit sessions. Okay, so that's our bin window. And uh, we've already kind of taken a look at our timeline window. You'll notice uh, what I'm doing here. If uh, you want to move any one of these windows, you can do so by pointing to the very top section of any window and then by holding your left mouse button down you can drag it and move it around uh, anywhere you like. If you just point anywhere inside the window itself it does not move. You have to actually point to the very top section of it in order to move that window around to, to rearrange it uh, if you'd like to set up a different layout system. But let's take a, a look at this uh, timeline window. This is where all of the editing takes place. Let's uh, go ahead and bring in uh, maybe two or three more clips here from our bin window now last time we did a drag and drop into our preview window. Maybe this time we'll bring it into our preview monitor by just simply double clicking on a clip. And we see that also brings it into our preview window so that once again we can scan through it by dragging our little indicator bar there along uh, left to right using our mouse uh, button by pointing to it and clicking down on our left mouse button. We can scrub through it and see if there's a point where we would like to pick it up and use it. And when we do, again, we can find an in point and uh, look for an out point. And then as we bring that clip down to the timeline, we're only going to bring that selected section of the clip. And we can bring it down and just drag it onto the timeline. And what we've done here is actually our very first edit. We've placed two clips side by side at the edit points that we want them to come together. And uh, we can play this, uh, hit the space bar on your keyboard, and that uh, plays the clip and then jumps right to the next clip. And if we want to throw in a dissolve, I've set a keyboard shortcut to help me do this. I'll just hit that keyboard shortcut and we see that we've got a nice dissolve in between the two clips. 
Okay, so that's our timeline. And again, we'll spend a whole tutorial uh, learning more about the timeline and all of its features and functions and how we can set up our timeline for efficient edits. Now let's take a look at our fourth window. It's called the palette window. And uh, I think that's an appropriate name because it can house a number of different palettes. And probably the one that you'll use the most is the effects palette. And uh, right now, as we look at it, we see that there's not much there. It's just mostly gray dead space. Well, what you need to do is expand out your effects folder by uh, just clicking on it there. And then again, uh, all of these folders hold more folders and uh, so you can quickly see that there are a lot of options available to you here in our effects palette. For example, let's maybe go to our uh, video filters folder. Let's maybe open up uh, uh, one of the second folders here, color correction, and uh, maybe grab the monotone filter. And uh, if we want to affect any clip on the timeline, we can just grab any one of these filters and simply bring it over, drag and drop it down onto any given clip. And we'll see that that monotone filter has turned our clip to a nice black and white. And if you've kept your eye on our palette window, you'll see that uh, we no longer have our effects window. What happens is when you drag and drop an effect on a clip, like we have just done on the timeline, Edius assumes that uh, you will probably want to do more with that effect than just simply drag and drop it on the, on the uh, video clip. And so by default, it takes you to the information palette. Now, if we want to go in and make changes to the monotone effect, we can double click on our monotone filter and this will open up a new window and here uh, by changing the slider bars we, we can make additional effects uh, to the monotone filter. Uh, let's say we want to give it kind of a sepia tone look uh, then we can adjust our slider bars until we like what we see as far as a sepia tone effect. So in our palette window we have these three palettes now the palette that is called the sequence marker uh, it can be very helpful to uh, mark points along your timeline that you want to refer to, uh, make a reference to, and come back to at any given time. Uh, just by having your timeline cursor at any point where you want to set that marker, go ahead and uh, choose the set marker and this places a little green arrow at that point and gives you a, a reference point which you can also add a comments to and that way, as you work through your edit and you maybe end up with 20 of these sequence marks, you can very quickly get back to any point in the video that you uh, want to mark. Now, some editors, myself included, uh, like to have the effects palette showing in its own separate window. And uh, you can actually break any of these palettes away and create your own separate window with any of them. And how you do that is simply go down to the tab, point to it with your mouse button, and by clicking down on your left mouse button, holding it down, drag away from your palette window, and this will create a, a, a brand new window with only the effects showing up in its own separate window. And uh, now we need to make accommodation for that. You may have noticed as you start to play around with these uh, windows that if you point your mouse cursor to that point in between any two windows and then do a left click and while you're holding down drag your mouse that as one window becomes smaller the uh, rest of the windows move as well. So as I'm trying to make room for this new window we might think that uh, we have a problem here and we uh, are not going to be able to open up a space for this. Well there are several ways that you can get around this and one is remember that if you point to the very top of any window you can move it independently and once it's broken away from the other three windows now as you slide it down you can move it uh, or resize it independent of moving any of the other three windows. Now another way that you can resize any window without also affecting the other three windows is by simply holding your shift key down before you do your drag motion with your mouse. And with that shift key held down, it will allow you to move or resize any window independent of moving the other three. And now we have a space available for our effects window. 
and you'll notice that as you bring any window close to uh, another window that it kind of snaps into place and once it has snapped into place uh, it kind of becomes docked to the other window and once it's docked that's when we can resize them all with one stroke as we move one uh, window it automatically moves uh, the other th three or four in this case now something that we should also point out is that any one of these uh, palettes uh, from our palette window can also reside in our bin window and you can do that by simply grabbing a hold of the tab of any of the palettes and with your left mouse button down simply drag that up to the bin window let's go ahead and drag them all up to our bin window for uh, this example all right and then we can drag uh, let's hold our shift key down again uh, we drag our bin window all the way down to the bottom and uh, now instead of having the four main windows of Edius we just have three and we can toggle back and forth between our bin window and any of the other palettes uh, that are available. So you can see that uh, you can manipulate your screen in a variety of different ways and change your layout uh, to meet uh, a variety of different types of editing tasks. For example, let's say it's time to organize your media and if you're working with a one monitor system and you don't have a lot of real estate well, what you might want to do is rearrange your windows so that you can uh, give yourself more a bin space as you organize your material. And uh, in a later tutorial, we'll spend a lot of time with our bin window and show you how you can organize your media. But uh, by rearranging your windows like this, even if you're working with just one monitor, one screen, you can uh, still have lots of room to work and organize your media this way. Now, once you've designed a layout that you like uh, for a specific type of editing task, such as organizing your media, what you can do is save that layout as your own personal preset and you can do that uh, under the view uh, menu option and go down to window layout and save current layout new and let's give it a name bin window and now we have uh, a personal layout designated for those times when we want to work more specifically with the bin window uh, but then uh, there will be those times when we want to concentrate uh, more on editing and uh, so what we might do is uh, rearrange our layout so that uh, it will better accommodate a, a longer timeline and uh, what we might want to do let's hold down our shift key is bring our bin window up and uh, give us more room to work with on our timeline and let's go ahead and save that as another layout under view and window layout save current screen new and we'll call this uh, editing so now if we wanted to quickly optimize our screen for working with the uh, bin we can now go to our windows layout choose apply layout and select our bin window and we're instantly back to our screen layout that is optimized for working with our bin now if you're working on a laptop that uh, has a very low resolution screen and you just don't have a, a lot of real estate to work with, one trick that you uh, might want to try is changing your uh, preview monitor to accommodate only one monitor instead of two and you can do that under view and uh, change it down here to single mode. And now uh, if we were to say uh, move up our bin window to here and stretch out our timeline window. Uh, because we are now only dealing with one uh, monitor instead of two, you can see that we can stretch out our bin window more to see more of our media at once as we uh, work on our edit. And so even if you're working on a small laptop with a very uh, low resolution screen, you can make adjustments to your windows to accommodate uh, almost any scenario. And working with just the one uh, preview window takes a little getting used to, but it actually works out fine. Uh, once you play with it a little bit, uh, you'll find that it's uh, quite easy to work with. If you look up into this area here, you see that um, it will let you know whether you're working with your play monitor or your record monitor, and will automatically switch between the two depending on the task that you're doing. For example, if we bring in a clip from our bin window, just double click on it, and it brings it in, you'll see that uh, EDIUS automatically 
switches from the record uh, preview window to the play preview window. And then as we bring this into our timeline, we'll see that EDIUS automatically switches now to the record monitor to show us uh, what's happening on our timeline. Okay, well I think that that uh, gives us a good introduction to the uh, main windows in EDIUS and how they can be arranged and rearranged and designed in different ways to accommodate different edit tasks.